Yes, I still have my lightsaber from 1997. Welcome to Birds of Views. And we're talking about The Force Awakens, just came out. A lot of people seem to love it, but there's always going to be those people who always say they kind of hate it because it's popular and good for them, man. Good for them. Uh, how would I rank them? Okay, number seven, Attack of the Clones, complete dog shit. While you watch these stupid drones be dragged around and get blown up and it's the most boring of all three movies. Uh, the Phantom Menace, again, pretty bad, but you do have that pretty cool badass scene in the end, so I'll, I'll, I'll boost it above clones. Uh, number uh, five, Sith, just because, again, great battle scene in the end, but the rest of the movie's kind of dog shit, although we did get this awesome meme every time we have finals. Number four, uh, Jedi, which only makes the list because it's part of the original trilogy, and without it, you can't really complete the story. And, you know, you do have a nice scene in the end with, with you know, Vader and all that stuff. Uh, number three, uh, Awakens. This movie. Fantastic movie. Um, yeah, I, I, I have nothing bad to say. Well, I do have... A, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Number two, uh, Empire. Which I know is going to surprise you, because I'm like, well, wait a second. We thought Empire would be number one on your list. Well, no, it's not. And, uh, deal with it. You know, I love Empire, and I love uh, A New Hope. You know, but, and honestly, when I was deciding my choice between the two, it was really like neck and neck. It's just a matter of what kind of mood I'm in, but I think this movie, uh, The Force Awakens, is definitely going to have the most rewatch. If I had all the movies on Blu-ray, and I had a pick on a cold, rainy night one day, what am I going to watch? I'll probably go with The Force Awakens, just because it kind of takes everything that you love about the franchise, makes it for 2015, and it's, it's everything that you love, but none of the shit that you hate about Star Wars. I mean, the acting is good which is something you don't get from the original trilogy, and definitely not from the prequels. Um, the storyline is not very original, but you feel like you're back in the same universe. I couldn't help but feel like this is kind of like J.J. Abrams doing, you know, uh, Into Darkness was like his version of A Wrath of Khan. This is very much his version of A New Hope. And there's a lot of plot points from the original uh, movie, A New Hope, and even the original trilogy, but I don't mind that. And it didn't do the nostalgia factor in such a way that it was top heavy and it beats you in the head. And yeah, you know, it's not it's not goosebumps. You know, it's not just trying to cash in. You got a feeling that the people who made this movie put a lot of work and effort and care into it, and they're actually like very enthusiastic about it. Han Solo, amazing. And it was nice seeing the other two from the trilogy, from the from the trio of the original cast. Would have been nice to see Lando in there. He wasn't in there. Um, but all in all, Harrison Ford was the key star of this movie. Um, he really brings it home. He's like the, the Obi-Wan Kenobi character from A New Hope. He's like the old, you know, new, who's passing on the torch, and you really just kind of gravitate to his character, because who doesn't love Han Solo? Um, but what I really liked about this movie is that the new cast, they really could have sucked a lot. You know, when you think back to the prequels, you're like, the acting was kind of terrible and even the actors who were good actors like Natalie Portman they were given such garbage to work with that you couldn't even enjoy the film. This movie has good actors who are a bunch of unknowns and a decent script with good dialogues and good practical effects and everything's just amazing! There, I said it. <laughs> um, as far as the bad, the only thing that I can really critique about this movie is that it does feel like a new hope a lot. It does feel like it's borrowing a lot from the original movie to try to get the nostalgia factor, but you know what? It's not a terrible thing. I guess the one big thing that I could critique the shit out of is the fact that uh, they have a Death Star, and it's I think it's called like Kill Star, Kill Star Killer. I think it was called. It's very creative. It's kind of like Killgrave, right? Um, yeah, and basically it's the Death Star only three times bigger, and it has the same. Uh, weakness as the original Death Star. Not the most original. I mean, they could have even made the shape different. They could have done anything differently with that. But beyond that, um, I thought the fight scenes were really well done. They, they didn't feel mm, overly choreographed. There weren't too many backflips. It felt like gritty when they had the lightsabers and they were hacking away at each other. You really felt like, okay, this feels a little bit more realistic. It's not choreographed on a giant blue screen. Uh, so yeah, so if I had to rank this, I'd give this movie a solid A. Go see The Force Awakens if you can. I had to wait because it kept selling out, and I keep I actually saw it like during the afternoon on my day off. 
Um, but uh, I thought it was great. Go check it out. I give this movie a solid A. Now, for all you people who haven't seen the movie yet, go away. Because we're going to talk about the spoiler section right now.